Assalamualaikum, I'm very good day to all. So we are going to start with our first chapter for Bio 091, Chapter 1 Macromolecules. So as you can see here, alright, so these are the learning objectives that you are going to learn in this chapter. So by the end of this chapter, you are able to discuss some biological important chemical groups. So basically, there are seven chemical groups that you are going to learn. All right, number two, I explain the structure of water and describe the properties of water and its importance. All right, so we are going to look at the structure of the water and also its properties. All right, number three, the formation of macromolecules from monomers. So as we know, macromolecules is actually a large molecules. So this large molecules is developed from its own monomer example carbohydrates so it's a large molecule so carbohydrates is developed from its monomer which is glucose all right number four describe the general structure of amino acid and group them based on their side chain so amino acid is actually the monomer for protein so amino acid combined with another amino acid and another amino acid and it will form a protein all right number five describe the formation of dipeptide and Polypeptide. So these are the example of uh, protein. All right, number six, discuss the classification of protein in terms of level of organization, structure, composition, and functions. So you, we are going to classify protein based on these few factors. All right, number seven, describe the four groups of carbohydrates, and then the synthesis of disaccharide and polysaccharide. So these are all the carbohydrates. And then describe the structure and function of starch, glycogen, and cellulose. These are also the type of carbohydrate. All right, number 10, state the types of lipid. All right, number 11, describe the synthesis and structure of fat and triglyceride. And then we are going to look at the functions of lipid and then structures and components of nucleic acid. So the monomer for nucleic acid is nucleotide. And then example of nucleic acid, we are going to look at the types and function of DNA and RNA. So DNA and RNA is actually the, um, the example of nucleic acid. All right, so as introduction, so proteins, DNA, carbohydrates, and lipid, it contains the carbon, carbon atom or elements. This carbon atom will either bond with other atoms or other elements, such as hydrogen, oxygen, Nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. So, as we know, atom is the smallest unit of matter, all right, and an element substance that cannot be broken down to other substance by chemical reaction. So, the stay as an element. So, molecule is a group of atoms, let's say uh, hydrogen. So, it's a combination. Hydrogen gas is a combination of two hydrogen atoms. Another example is oxygen, sodium chloride, and water. So compounds is the substance consisting of more than one type of element. As example, water. Water consists of one hydrogen atom and two oxygen atoms. So a combination of these two become the water molecule, which is a compound. All right, and then atoms are held together by the chemical bond. All right, okay, see, so based on this one, you can see uh, this is the structure of atom. So this is the nucleus part. So nucleus part can be divided into two. The one that is in pink color that represents the proton. So proton have the positive charge, all right, that would determine the element. And then they have the neutrons, which they have no charge that will later determine its isotope. And then a nucleus is surrounded by the electrons that carry the negative charge that later will form the negative cloud and determine its chemical behavior. All right, so the mass number of element, as you know, it's the total of proton number plus the neutron number, and then the atomic number of the element, it's equal to its proton number, okay? All right, next we move on to the bonds and interaction. So basically there are two types of bonds, covalent bond and non-covalent bond. So non-covalent bond can be divided into a few types of bond which are ionic bond, hydrogen bond, hydrophobic interaction, and van der Waals interaction. So now we move on to covalent, covalent bond first. So covalent bond is a strong bond. So how the covalent bond is formed is by sharing of electron pairs between the atom in a C molecule, all right? So it happens between the C molecule. Next one, uh, non-covalent bond. 
First one is ionic bond. Ionic bond is the attraction between opposite charges. Let's see sodium chloride. The sodium has positive charge, the chloride have the negative charge. So combination of these two will form the ionic bond. All right. Next one is the hydrogen bond. It's between partially positive hydrogen atom and partially negative atom, atom in a polar covalent bonds. So as example, the hydrogen bond is formed between two different water molecules. So between one water molecules with another water molecules, there will be hydrogen bond that attach the two water uh, molecules. The next one is the hydrophobic interaction. So this is the forcing of hydrophobic, sorry, hydrophobic portion of molecules together when placed in water. As example, let's say the, uh, between two fats, the image, uh, immersed in the water, then they will create the hydrophobic interaction. The last one is the Van der Waals interaction. So it's a weak interaction between atoms due to opposite polarized electron cloud. All right, so we are going to look at this one uh, later. All right, next one. Okay, let's look at the first type of bond, which is the covalent bond. So as we know, the valence shell or the outermost orbit um, is called the valence shell. So the electrons around the valence shells is called valence electron. Or as we know, the covalent bond is actually formed uh, by sharing a pair of electrons. Okay. So as example, the hydrogen uh, between two hydrogen atoms. So in order for this hydrogen atom to bind with this hydrogen atom, they will have the hydrogen bond. So how this hydrogen bond is formed by sharing of, of electrons on the valence shell. All right, so there is no net charge. So it satisfies the octet rule. I'm sure you are familiar with the octet rule during SPM. So there's no unpaired electrons. So strength depends on the number of shared electrons. The higher the number of shared electrons, the stronger the bond is. All right. So these are the example of um, how covalent bond is formed. So this is the hydrogen molecule. So hydrogen molecule is formed between two hydrogen atoms. So as we can see here, nucleus carry the positive charge, and then we have the valence electron. All right. So this positive charge of the nucleus of this atom will be attracted to this valence electron. Same goes to this one. This positive charge will be attracted to its valence electron. So later, the two electrons here, all right, um, become shared and form a covalent bond. All right, so here, that rule is satisfied for each hydrogen atom. So here, they will have the covalent bond. Okay, all right, these are other examples of how covalent bond is formed. So this is the previous example, hydrogen. You can see how the electron is being shared. Same goes with the oxygen, all right, between two oxygen. So they become oxygen molecule. And this is water. Water, in order to form water, you need one oxygen and two hydrogen. So the sharing of electrons here. So these are the covalent bond. Same goes with the methane, uh, consists of one carbon and four hydrogen. Okay, next, we move on to the electronegativity. What do you mean by electronegativity? Is the atom's affinity or attraction for electrons. Whether the um, uh, atoms sucker by the electrons. So when we see atoms have higher affinity for electrons, so that means they love the electrons, okay? So the more electronegative an atom is, the more strongly it pulls electron to itself. So there are two types of covalent bond, whether it's a non-polar covalent bond or a polar covalent bond. So non-polar covalent bond is when two hydrogen atoms share only one pair of electrons. So the simplest uh, example is the hydrogen molecule. So they only share one pair of electrons, so automatically they will become non-polar covalent bond. All right, so why they share only one electron? Because they have the same electronegativity. So they have the same attraction uh, between the two atoms. So there'll be equal sharing of electrons. Different with polar covalent bond. Polar covalent bond is formed between the oxygen and two hydrogen atoms in water. So water, in order to form water, we need two hydrogen and oxygen. 
So in this case, oxygen have higher electronegativity compared to hydrogen. So electron will attract more electron towards itself compared to hydrogen. So there'll be unequal sharing of electrons, okay? All right, so these are the examples of the polar covalent bond between the oxygen and two hydrogen. So this is the water molecules. So this is another example of non-polar molecule, which is a thin. Okay. All right, the next uh, type of bond is the ionic bond. So it is formed by the attraction between uh, oppositely charged ions. So example is the sodium chloride, how the sodium ion which is positive is attracted to the negatively charged chloride ion. So gain or loss of electron by atom will form the ion. So as example, sodium atom, sodium atom loses an electron, so it becomes sodium plus. So it becomes positively charged. However, chlorine atom, when it gain the electron, so it becomes uh, negatively charged. So it becomes chloride atom. Oh, sorry, chloride ion. All right, oppositely charged sodium and chloride will be attracted to each other and they will form the ionic bond. However, electrical attraction of water uh, molecules can disrupt the forces holding the ion together. So as we know, the sodium chloride is the salt. When it is immersed in water, it might disrupt the ionic bond of the sodium chloride. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, so this is the sodium atom. So you can see how the sodium atom loses an electron, so it becomes positively charged. So it becomes sodium ion, all right, and A plus. All right, and this one, how you can see the chlorine atom receive an electron, so it becomes negatively charged, so it becomes chloride ion, all right. So when this two uh, form the ionic bond, so later it become the sodium chloride, okay? All right, next we move on to another type of bond, which is the hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bond is formed between the partial positive hydrogen atom. So you can see in this diagram, uh, this is the hydro, this is the water molecule. So you can see how the oxygen is partially negative, how the hydrogen is partially positive, and this is the ammonia. You can see how the nitrogen is partially negative and how the hydrogen is partially positive. So in this case, hydrogen bond is formed between the uh, partially positive hydrogen and between nitrogen, which is partially negative nitrogen. So it is attracted to each other and they will become the hydrogen bond. So it's actually a weak bond. So same goes with um, two different water molecules. In two different water molecules, the hydrogen, partially positive hydrogen atom will be attracted to partially negative oxygen atom. So they will have a weak bond, right? So hydrogen has a partial positive charge. So oxygen and nitrogen will, will have the partially negative charge, right? So this is one of the examples. Okay, all right, next we move on to the hydrophobic interaction. So it's interaction between non-polar molecules in a polar solvent. So polar solvent is definitely, is, is usually water. All right, example, the mixing of fats, which is the non-polar. So you can see here, this is the fats. So since it is non-polar, it will be surrounded with water. So when these two fats is mixed, so they will form the hydrophobic interaction here. Okay, so this is another example. You can see how the hydrophobic interaction can be found in the structure of the protein. Okay, our next one, uh, last type of interaction is the van der Waals interaction. So, uh, van der Waals interaction can be defined as the weak interaction between molecules or part of molecules that result from the impermanent local partial charges. So, it's not permanent. All right, so you can see here, at first, in this hydrogen molecule, all right, the positively charged nucleus will be attracted to this valence electron. All right, same goes to this one. Positively charged nucleus will be attracted to its uh, negatively charged uh, uh, valence electron. So in this case, there's no electronegativity. You have the equal sharing of the electron. So, so there is no electronegativity difference between the two hydrogens. So they are non-polar and do not have a dipole. However, when these two hydrogen molecules 
uh, put next to each other. Dipole is in use because electron rearranged themselves. So in this case, this valence electrode might be attracted to this positively charged nucleus. Okay, this is how the van der Waals interaction is formed. So individually, it's weak and occur when atoms and molecules are very close together. But uh, when there are many such interaction happens, they might be a very powerful uh, interaction. Right, next, we move on to the chemical reaction. So what is chemical reaction? It's actually a formation or breaking of the uh, chemical bonds. So whether we form a new, new uh, products or we break the products, okay? Uh, reactants is the original molecules and product is the molecule resulting from the chemical reaction. So here is the reactant, two hydrogen uh, molecule and one oxygen molecules. When chemical reaction happens, we will get the products, which is the two molecules of water. Okay, next is the isomers. So isomers can be defined with a compound with the same molecular formula, but they have the different structure. So once they have the different structure, automatically they will have different properties. Okay, so isomers, we have three types of isomer. The first one is the structural isomers. So what is structural isomers? It's uh, isomers that have different covalent ar arrangement of their atoms. So you can see here, they have the same molecular formula, C5, H12. Same goes to this one. They also have C5, H12. However, you can see how they have different covalent arrangement of their atoms. So automatically, this one will become a pantene. This one will become two methyl butene. So since they, there is a different structure, automatically the properties will be different. Next type of isomers is the cis trans isomers. So they have the same covalent regimen. So you can see the carbon skeleton. However, they have a different special arrangement. You can see how the X for cis isomer is on the same side. However, the X here in trans isomer is on opposite side. So they have the different special arrangement. Okay. Okay, and then the last type of isomers is the enantiomers. So enantiomers is the isomers that are mirror image to each other. So differ in spatial arrangement around an asymmetric carbon. So asymmetric carbon is the carbon that is um, attached to four different atoms or molecules. So you can see here uh, how this carbon is attracted to four different atom or molecule. So you can see how L isomer and D isomer are in the opposite direction. So it mirror image to each other. So let's say you, you look at the hydrogen atom here. So hydrogen atom will be on your right hand side and then the L isomer will be on your left hand side. So they are actually located at uh, uh, mirror image to, uh, to each other. All right, okay. All right, now we move on to another subtopic, which is the functional groups, okay? So um, basically, there are seven chemical groups or functional group that you are going to learn. The first one is hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl group is the OH. Carbonic group is C double bond O. And then carboxyl group is uh, COOH. And then amino group is NH2. Sulfur hydrate is SH. Phosphate group is PO42 minus. And the last one is matter group, which is CH3. Okay, and then, okay, these are the uh, characteristics of hydroxyl group. So you can see uh, how OH is um, present in the structure of this one. So the example is ethanol, all right? So they have the functional group of OH. So normally the example is alcohol. And then functional properties, you can look, uh, you can see on your own. All right, let's move on to carbonyl. All right, carbonyl is C double bond O. All right, so basically for carbonyl, all right, there are two types of compound. So if the carbonyl group are located uh, within a carbon skeleton, let's say it's in the middle of the carbon skeleton, automatically this one will become the ketone. So one example is the acetone. However, if the carbonyl group is located at the end of the carbon skeleton, just like this one, so automatically it becomes the aldehyde group. 
So one example of uh, aldehyde is the propanol. All right. Okay, next, we move on to carboxyl. So carboxyl is COOH. All right. Normally, the, the compound or molecule that have COOH, they will form the acid. Okay. All right. Because they have the acid properties. Okay, next one is the amino. So amino uh, is referring to NH2. All right. So you can see how glycine. Glycine is one type of amino acid. So they will have the amine group and also carboxyl group. All right. So basically amine group, they act as the base. All right. Okay, next one is the sulfhydryl SH. So you can see how the structure of the cysteine here have the SH. All right. And then next one is the phosphate PO2 minus. So this is the structure of glycerol phosphate. So this is the uh, functional group of phosphate. Okay. So normally, uh, phosphate, they will uh, contribute to generating negatively charge of the molecule. So uh, some uh, see how, how, how come the molecule is negatively charged? Uh, probably due to the presence of the phosphate group. Okay, and then the last one is methyl. So you can see how um, the structure here have the um, methyl group, which is CH3. Okay, that's the end of this part. Till then, thank you. Bye-bye.